Mommy Space, a place where you can remember who you are in the midst of it all. This podcast gives moms of all stages a voice to share their experiences and the truth that there is no right way to mom. Welcome back to Mommy Space. This is Brie, and we are now officially in season four of this podcast for this year. That is 2019. Happy Friday if you're listening to this episode the day that it launches. I can't believe it's already April. Crazy. Um, Speaking of April, did any of you guys do April Fool's Day jokes? I always forget, and then the day of, I'm like, oh yeah, it's April Fool's. Let's do something funny, and it never ends up working out. But I did have one friend who happens to be a past episode guest, Christelle Jackson, who did an amazing prank on her husband. I'll just give you... (laughs) I don't know why I'm even doing this. I'll just give you this short snippet. She bought this like fart spray on Amazon and sprayed it all over his clothes and his hamper and then like videoed it. I'm going to try and link it or something (laughs) so you can see it. It was hilarious. Anyways, happy April. Uh, I hope you started off with a good laugh like I did because of my dear friend, Christelle. Anyways, I'm so excited that you tuned in today for this episode. This is a very fun season for me. I hope it is for you too. Coming out of kind of a deeper season in March with the hard stuff, this month we're talking all about how to adventure as a family, and we talk to lots of mamas who are doing it with their families in unconventional, different, exciting ways. All right. Well, if you're not following already on Instagram at mommy space, go check it out. I'm posting there every day on stories. Keep up with all the latest stuff. Also, if you've been following along, you know that I write an original song to go with each season. So that means this is the newest season. There's a new song. It's at the end of this episode. It's also on SoundCloud. Links in my bio on Instagram. Check it out. All right. Without further ado, here's episode one of season four. Welcome back to Mommy Space. This is Brie, and today I am chatting with Katie Easling from the Vagabond family on Instagram. Katie, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me on. I've been looking forward to chatting with you. I love following your Instagram and your wonderful stories and your podcast, so I really appreciate it. You're (laughs) so kind. Thank you. I have been looking forward to chatting with you, and I'm really excited about this season specifically featuring families adventuring together and I just feel like it will be um, something really special to share with this community because I feel like there's so many people who think about and doing adventure things or just getting out with their family more even going camping whatever it is but sometimes we have things that hold us back and so I'm excited to chat with people like you who are doing (laughs) doing the stuff daily so um, before we kind of dive in would you just tell us a little bit about yourself and your family and And then we can kind of share uh, the story of your journey into motherhood. Yeah, absolutely. Um, So, I mean, like you said, so many more people are kind of beginning to do this journey. Um, And I think it's really exciting and encouraging to see other families starting this as well. I actually was watching on Instagram for years before we began, um, actually taking the steps to start becoming the Vagabond family um, and watching other accounts and trying to get um, like encouragement and motivation and just to know that other people out there were doing it. So thank you. Um, so my husband, um, was a commercial contractor. I say was because he retired back in July. Um, but our, our, our family's life has been tied up in the industry for many, many years. Um, when he and I got married, I was a chef. Um, But I decided to join the construction company just because um, I enjoyed the work and I enjoyed the job and I enjoyed the life. We actually built and designed restaurants, which is really fun to me. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. (laughs) It was was really, really fun. And we did that for um, almost 15 years. Um, So different at times, but uh, we all did that, the commercial construction life for almost 15 years. And as he did it, 
it became more and more time intensive. Mm. So there was actually one year, uh, two years ago, that he was gone for 300 nights in a hotel room. Whoa. And <laughs> my kids and I would try to join him. We have three children. Um, my oldest is 13. He's my oldest son. And my daughter is 11. Mm. And then my youngest son is nine. And as the kids were growing, our lifestyle just became busier and busier and more and more, um, you know, John having to be away because the company was growing, which was lovely. But, mm. um, and me, my <laughs> the part of it that I did all the paperwork and logistics and accounting, my side was getting busier and busier. We actually homeschool. Mm. Um, and I was just feeling pulled in all these directions um, from trying to be a good wife and trying to be a good businesswoman and trying to be a good mom. And um, in July of last year, something, well, I shouldn't say July of last year. It actually started before then, probably mm. with watching all of these families on Instagram. Mm. Um, and it just kind of planted a seed in my brain and in my heart that maybe one day our family could travel together and have all of these adventures together. And so we kind of as a couple um, and as a family decided that maybe to kind of start doing that. And we totally did it scared. Oh my <laughs> we, gosh. I love we that. We didn't know what we were doing. <laughs> so, yeah. So that's, that's our family and that's kind of our background and what uh, we, what we did before. <laughs> that's so cool. I love that you said that phrase, we did it scared. I think that's such <laughs> a powerful <laughs> phrase because it like, it just gives the freedom to do it and it's okay to be afraid and, but yeah. good things come from it. That's so You're cool. You're so right. <laughs> oh, so good. Okay, so I love to start out um, learning a little bit about each mama's like motherhood uh, journey and like how right. it started. I think it's there's so many unique parts to it, and it's such there a big is. part of each of our lives. And so, why don't you just share with us a little bit, like um, how how did that whole process look for you guys, especially yeah. with you guys working? Where you guys did you guys want to have kids? Did how many did you want? Like just just dive right. in. <laughs> Okay. So I actually grew up not being at like a babysitter or around a lot of kids. Um, I have a younger sister, but she's six years younger. And so that age gap made it, I don't know, a little bit harder for me to connect um, to younger children on some level. Like I feel like I, for whatever reason, I just never saw mommyhood as part of my journey. Mm -hmm. uh, when we, John and I met, I was actually working as a chef in the Bahamas on a yacht. And that my was, gosh, where I, that's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> it was amazing. And I loved it. And that's what? where I saw myself. Wow. And it, I saw myself there in this job, in this position without kids, because I, I felt like to add kids into this travel life would be <laughs> too hard and too complicated. Mm -hmm. And then I met John and John is like, he's one of 10. His family Whoa. is a fantastic circus that I've married into. <laughs> <laughs> They're all incredible. And he's actually the third born, but he has this awesome personality. He loves being around kids. And even before we were married and even before we even thought about having kids. Like I saw him interacting with his younger siblings and was like, this is a guy who was meant to be a dad. Um, wow. So I actually started dating when we started dating and getting to know each other better and getting to know each other's family better. It actually started changing my mindset wow. about having kids. Yeah. Like, isn't that cool? Like yes. he just, his heart shone through so much that I was like, you know what? <laughs> if, I'm ever going to have kids, it would be with this guy, wow. but that's a big if. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> so, you know, we, we dated for, um, several months, almost a year. And then I knew that he was going to, I, or I felt like at some point in the near future, he was going to ask me to marry him. And so I had to come to a decision, like this guy deserves kids. He loves them. Like he sees his future, um, as having kids so I was like, I need to make a decision. Like either that's going to be something that I'm going to need to grow and accept, um, or I need to let him go. Mm. Um, wow. and so, so I made the decision, um, that I wanted to be a mom with this guy, wow. just with this guy. Oh my gosh, that's 
so <laughs> we got married and we we knew he, so he was a guide um in Alaska and Idaho and all over the country and I was you know chef Bahamas Texas like wow. Colorado all over the country so we kind of knew we wanted to continue to travel and have that be part of our lives. Mm. Um, but we also, I don't know, there was something stirring even very early in our marriage that made both of us want to, um, have kids and Mm. be able to have them experience whatever, you know, lifestyle we decided to be with us. Um, so we actually got pregnant very quickly after we got married. Um, I think it was like, uh, eight or 10 weeks after we got married, we ended up getting pregnant with no my, way. our oldest <laughs> <laughs> from a mom who was from a girl who was not going to be a mom to a, so very crazy. quickly a mom. Wow. And it was hysterical because John and I were both babies and we were both yeah. like, we should just have a kid. Like <laughs> now is a great time. We had no house. We had nowhere we were living. Like we were like, it'll be easy. Like we'll just add a kid to this mix and we'll keep traveling and like it won't change anything about what we're already doing. Like we'll just we'll just throw a kid in the mix. <laughs> and of course, like it changes everything sure. uh, in yeah. the best ways. Um, but yeah, my oldest son, Cole, uh, was born. We got married in September um, of 2004 and he was born in September of 2005. So oh, <laughs> very, goodness. yeah, right at a year <clears throat> of us being married. Um, and then from there, he was just such a joy and he was such an awesome baby. I mean, of course it changed like how we traveled Mm -hmm. because you're you're adding another person and it should, but, but it definitely, um, just made me realize how much I love being a mom Mm -hmm. and I, how much I love, um, getting to experience and raise these incredible human beings and experience life with them from their perspective. So, uh, we had my daughter two, two years later mm-hmm. and I got pregnant again and had Kayla. And then two and a half years after that, I got pregnant and I had, we have, um, case he's our last baby. Wow. Um, and so that was kind of my journey to motherhood. Um, it was definitely like ups and downs of like making that decision. But once we decided to like have kids together, we have never looked back and it's been, it's been a really (laughs) the best part of the journey. (laughs) Oh, that's so precious. What a cool story. And I love, I love that you guys have like just that awareness almost, I think it's almost cool that you were uh like had this like oh we'll just have a baby it's fine yeah, like just that be because yeah totally <laughs> because it kind of like it kind of helps you just move right in and right you like experience yeah, the true. differences and changes but right. because that was such a priority in the beginning like right. I think that like obviously has like affected the rest of your lives and it's so yeah. inspiring I just think that's so <laughs> cool yes. it did. it's mm. been it's been really wonderful I've never ever regretted oh. the decision that we made <laughs> that's so cool well one of the questions I um, was going to ask was what made you and your family decide to live in such an adventure adventurous way which you kind of already yeah. answered um if you had more to add to that you can totally do that um, and then I was going to see yeah. if you could share with us, like, give us a little update, like, since you, the, from the moment yeah. you guys decided to, because, because <laughs> tell us, like, actually, like, the logistics and the right. practical side, like, w- you guys are in an yeah. Airstream, right? Like, we are. So we just are. go for We're it. a full-time family yeah. of five in an Airstream. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, so I think after we started having kids, the travel slowed quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Um and as our work lives got busier and the kids had other commitments and things like that, which is okay. Like it was a season that our family needed and, um, and something that we don't regret, but we both, John and I both started thinking like, is this really how we want to raise our family with him being gone all the time with the kids so busy in school? Like he really wasn't having the ability to see all these milestones that especially, you know, as Cole's turning 13, like there's just been a lot in his life that's been changing, Mm -hmm. um, as he gets older. And we were, I just felt this heaviness and the sadness that John was missing out on so much of it just to provide for our family. Um, and I mean, he built this incredible company. So there was also this struggle and Mm -hmm. we, we built it together, but he built this incredible company. So there was a struggle of like letting it go. Mm -hmm. And the, 
unknown, you know, wow. um, of life without this safety net that we mm. had created. And I mean, we had the house and we had the cars and we had all this stuff, but we didn't have time as a family. Mm. Um, and so we both kind of began considering a couple of years ago that there might need to be a change. There, there wasn't a sustainable way for us to live life apart from each other. Um, but that's really hard. Mm -hmm. So it's one thing to come to that realization, but like you say, the practicality mm -hmm. of actually doing that as a family, you know, especially when you have a company and when you have like, I mean, for everyone, like you have jobs, you have right. to have a way to support yourself. Like right. all of this comes into play, uh, when you're making these big decisions. And I think we actually dragged our feet for a couple of years mm -hmm. because we just didn't really know what coming out the other side was going to look mm. like, like, what was it going to look like for us to actually be a full-time travel family? Mm. Um, and finally in the spring of 2018, um, we just kind of had this conversation, like it's not working. Mm. Our life as it is, is not working for us. It's not working for our kids. It's not working for our marriage. It's not working for anything. Um, and so we began to put into steps, um, what closing the company would look like, um, finishing projects and like end of, end of project timelines. And we, you know, began talking to the kids about what that would look like. We actually bought a vintage Airstream and began restoring it together. Mm. Um, and wow. we, yeah, we began to look like, you know, what it would be if we sold, um, as much as we could mm. and put the rest into storage and where we would even go. And mm. so, so we did, we, we, we finished the Airstream. We closed the company, um, terrified, wow. um, in July of, of last year. And we just took off across the country to see as much as we can with our kids for as long as we can. Um, and we're both planners and this has been pretty <laughs> unplanned. <laughs> like we didn't know what, um, earning steady income on the road would look like for our family. Like I, I've been part of a company for a while that's a health and wellness company, but it just, it's hard, I think, to go from what you know is stable and consistent to the unknown. Mm -hmm. um, and so we started traveling in July of last year and we visited Alaska, Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, um, Colorado, New Mexico, <laughs> uh, where else? Colorado, New Mexico, Alabama, Arkansas, Georgia, Florida. And we actually just spent the last two months in Florida as a family. And we were, we were able to give of our time for two months, um, volunteering with a program that teaches, um, English as a second language to Korean students who come over here for a month at a time. So the what? first group we had 60 Korean students and the next group we had 22. So it's oh been gosh. like, wow. <laughs> it's been amazing to be able to not only see this journey working out mm -hmm. and this like trip, travel, mm -hmm. whatever, mm -hmm. travel life working out, not only for us, but also being able to like give of our time and give of our yeah, give our hearts because like it was such an incredible opportunity to be able to um, spend those months with those Korean students. So wow. it's it's been <laughs> better than I ever dreamed. There's definitely been challenges. Um, you know, <laughs> we're living in an airstream as a family of five with a big, <laughs> huge dog and a very small dog. And oh my god, <laughs> there, there are space issues. There are yeah. spatial awareness issues. Only one person can cook in the kitchen at one time. Yeah. And like I, you know, as a chef, it's been challenging oh, wow. to have a countertop that's like a foot wide oh, and a foot across. Um, but yeah, like doing this journey and being able to experience it as a family, um, I, I, yeah, I don't regret a thing. <laughs> oh, wow. I have like a million questions like buzzing <laughs> through my head. Um, like, okay, okay. So like... What, how did you choose the first place? Do you guys have like any set amount of time that you choose to like spend in one place or is it kind of like free form? Uh, yeah, start with that. <laughs> We're going crazy. So, yeah. So it's pretty free form. Okay. Um, we just, we kind of knew the areas that we wanted to spend, um, time in, but like for Florida, um, 
we were debating between Florida, Bali, or Baja for this Whoa. spinning this winter. Huge differences in places, lots of pros and cons for like every single one. Mm. Um, and the friend of ours who we see, hadn't seen in like eight or nine years, um, we ran into him when we were in Washington State, which is another place that I think <laughs> I forgot to mention. We were at this year and he mentioned it and we just felt called and wow. led and meant <laughs> to be in Florida helping out for the past few months. And I think so f- for us, it is definitely the unplanned and it's mm-hmm. definitely waiting for those opportunities that just sink and come together and you just know that it's meant to be. Yeah. So we've been trying to like wait for those, those times. Like when there's uncertainty, we just kind of pause and it's great that we can have that time now to just pause and think and be like, okay, where, where are we supposed to be going next? Mm. <laughs> That's incredible. And do you guys have any like, um, well, I'm assuming you probably don't have a timeline then as far as like when you'll be or if you'll be done doing this kind of travel. And like with, would you go in other places in the world? Are you focusing on the U.S.? We would love to visit other countries. Mm -hmm. Like I think that's definitely something in the probably fairly near future that we're going to be exploring. Um, John actually asked me a couple days ago when we were um, driving back from Florida, he's like, do you think we'll ever live in a regular house again? (laughs) And I told him, I was like, I don't think so. Like, I think this life has just synced so well with our family um, that we're we're actually going to build a house in Colorado, um, but it's going to be more of like a home base. So if we need to come back and recharge for a couple of weeks, we can, but we can rent it out as like a VRBO in the meantime. And it's something too that if for some reason with the kids or with one of us, like if for some reason it stops working and being sustainable for our family, like we'll have a place to go back to. Mm. Um, we're actually at our house in Texas right now <laughs> because we needed to be here for a week. Um, so it's nice to have that um, to go back to if we need it. Mm. But really the only reason we're back in Texas is because the house is on the market and wow. we needed to come back and do a few things around it. I don't, we were, none of us are ready to come back home, which wow. I think was a really good sign. Yeah. yeah like yeah. we were all like, Oh man, we have to go back to Texas. We have to go back to our house. Mm. And like, I didn't expect that of my kids when we first started. My youngest, um, is a very, he likes stability and he likes mm-hmm. routine mm-hmm. and he likes his bed <laughs> and he mm-hmm. likes all of, you know, just all, he's just that kid. Mm-hmm. Um, so for him to have embraced this travel lifestyle as much as he had, I think has been really special to see. And I think it also for him, the benefits of having the Airstream and having his own bed there mm-hmm. and his own toys mm-hmm. and the ability to come back to that every evening mm-hmm. has been really beneficial. I know some, you know, kids don't, don't mind as much. And I'm sure we'll face those challenges when we go overseas. But um, yeah, for this yeah. first part of the journey for him, having the Airstream has been really incredible. Like he has his own space mm. and he has his, yeah, he has his Legos. So yes. <laughs> oh, yes. Wow. That's so, that's so cool. Um, okay. Let's see. <laughs> I tried to like file through <laughs> just so you guys know listening. I gave her like maybe four questions, but I told her I might have other ones and I do. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I okay, love good. It. Okay, good. Um, okay, so one of the things that pops in my mind uh, is yeah. like the financial side of things. So right. I know for me, like I immediately go to, but like, but ha- but how do you do that? Like how yeah. how would we live on the road? How would we sustain like uh, life on the road? And what would that look like practically? So right. it's going to be different for um, all of these different families that I get to right. chat with, obviously. But like, yeah. if you're if you're willing, like c- yeah. to share that kind of side of it, like what does of that course. look like for you guys? Yeah, like, and like you said, it is really different for every family. And it, it's kind of how you're how you you're willing to go about it. So if mm-hmm. financially, it's going to be a struggle for you to stay at like super nice campsite, you know, super nice RV parks and all that kind of yeah. stuff. Like look into other options because we we knew if we did this, especially because our house hasn't sold yet and mm-hmm. we're still paying like all the mortgages and all the you know electric and water and tax and everything else for having this house here. Wow. Um, we knew we would need to go into it with a less expensive mindset. Mm. Like, and that's not how we travel. 
Yeah, yeah. Like, I, lo- I love going out to dinner every night and yes. every lunch. And, like, that's just how I was before. <laughs> so, so for me, I think realizing that this is a lifestyle and not just a vacation mm, was really that's key. So good. That's so good. Yeah. It really – and it, it helped change my brain from thinking – oh my gosh, we're in this new place. We need to go everywhere yeah. every single day and see every single thing and eat at every restaurant yeah. to no, like we have time. Mm. Like this is slow travel. We don't have any rush to be anywhere. Wow. We can always come back here at yeah. some point if oh we want to see that's more. So cool. Yeah. Like it just, oh. that mindset shift yeah. um, has really helped us stay on budget because it really, it is so easy to get I, and I think I've heard other full-time families like talk about this as well. It is so easy to get caught up in the, we need to see everything all the time. Mm-hmm. And we did that. Mm-hmm. We were caught up in that mentality um, for about three or four months when we mm-hmm. first got started. And we were like, oh my gosh, we are spending so <laughs> much money. <laughs> we are spending so much money on every experience and everything and every, you know, all of this stuff, so much money on gas because we were moving like every single night and we had to be like, whoa, like this is not how we, in, um, like mentally envisioned this lifestyle being is this calming, mm-hmm. lovely, mm-hmm. like relaxed time and, and kind of an unwinding time. Wow. <laughs> we, we didn't envision it as being this, we're moving every single day and every single day we're trying to figure out the next spot we're supposed to go to and, wow. you know, Google mapping and all this other stuff. So we, we did, we fell into the tourist trap the mm-hmm. first couple of months. Um, and so I, I think for us, that's been the key for staying on budget. Mm. Um, the other challenge that we've experienced is that I do work remotely. Mm. Um, and so finding viable Wi-Fi oh, <laughs> has yeah. become like everything. <laughs> like I, I read constantly reviews on like Compendium and all these other campsite mm. websites to try and find the places that have the best Wi-Fi so that I can continue to work. Wow. Um, but the slow travel is really good for that as well. So we were actually just in the Everglades a couple weeks ago and we'd intended to stay for a week. Um, it's a beautiful national park, uh, campground there called Long Pine. Uh, we had intended to stay for the week and we ended up staying for 10 or 11 days wow. because yeah, we, we got good cell phone service there. Mm. It was a lovely campsite that the kids could just ride their bikes oh. and relax and meet other campers. Uh, beautiful location. Like the Everglades was really, really incredible. We got to do little hikes every single day, but it also was really beneficial for me being able to work. Um, Mm -hmm. and, and just like, I wasn't having to plan our next moves. Like I knew where we're going to be like, sure, we can go for a a hike or whatever during the day. But if I need to sit down and actually work with my team or, right. or work with social media or whatever yeah. I need to do. Um, and I, yeah, that, that's been <laughs> hugely wow. important, I think is, is figuring all that out. That's so good. I, I love that thought and, you know, of like, oh, this is, this is a lifestyle. It's not vacation, but I imagine yeah. like that there would be some almost like, well, I can imagine for myself, like that detoxing yeah. of like, Oh, we got to do all the things. And then like, oh, oh, okay, it's okay. It's going to be okay. Like that totally makes sense. I feel like that's totally something we would do at first. But um, wow. Okay. So one of the things too that popped into my mind was like, you know, obviously this is like an exciting thing that you guys are getting to do, but it's also sacrifice and a sacrifice of like, um, of having things or being Mm -hmm. in one location or getting to run a business. And like, what are, what are some things that you guys have, um, that you feel you've like gained in the midst of your sacrifice? I think time is the biggest one that pops into my head, like Mm. time and connection. Mm. Um, because while we were able to, you know, build this company and build this, this lifestyle, um, we were missing out. John would go to work before it was on the days he was even home. He would go to work while it was still dark and come home while it was dark. And I just felt like he was missing so much. And then I was missing so much hold up in my office Mm -hmm. all day long. So now, even whenever I work from the road, I have this boundary. I only work for four hours a day. Mm -hmm. That's it. 
Like if I can't accomplish everything they need to do for my work in four hours a day, then it gets pushed on to the next one. And like, I think for John and I both, we both to be a little bit of a workaholic. He in particular, um, just has the hardest time stopping Mm. work when he knows there's more to be done. Sure. Sure. Um, so, so, I mean, and I think that's the, his, you know, he had that provider mindset where he just had to be working all the time. And I think it's one, a trap that, you know, both sexes, men and women can fall into that. Um, you know, you have to be a thousand percent all the time in order to be successful. And he had, for both of us, like we were, we redefined what successful Mm. is in our, our mentality. Um, and it's not always money, but we learn to be successful or we're learning, we're working on being, feeling like success is time well spent together. Mm. Um, and that time is like so incredibly valuable and we didn't value it enough before this. Um, so I would say that's a th- huge thing we've gained is like this time awareness wow. that um, our moments of like every single day are, are so incredibly valuable and to not waste those. Mm. Um, you know, not, not that work is even a waste, but right, right. just finding ways to balance that, um, balance that work time and balance that family time in, in really meaningful ways. So yeah, wow. time, <laughs> time, I think is the thing we value wow. most. <laughs> I think that's so huge, especially like for those of us in the U S like, obviously this is kind of a thing at, everywhere, but I'm, I know that like right. just speaking from experience living in this culture, my whole life yes. or whatever is like that, that idea of success is like so ingrained into our society of like, this is what right. it looks like. It's, It's, you know, continually climbing the ladder and getting the things. Mm -hmm. And as much as we don't like to admit it, that's what it is, right? So it's like, I love being able to like see families like you that are redefining, just like you said, redefining (laughs) what the word success means and like what it is to each family individually. Like, I think that's such an important thing that we don't often like, I I don't know. I feel like sometimes it feels like a trap. Like we can't actually choose that for ourselves, but we can, like we totally have the power to do that. And I think it's just (laughs) so amazing to see it kind of worked out in the way that you guys are doing it. Obviously it won't be that way for everybody, but it's so powerful to see like an actual like live thing that, you know, the way you guys are doing it. So yeah, so thank cool. you. I mean, you're yes. so right. Like it is, it is literally going upstream mm. of mm-hmm. everything we've been taught and every what everyone else is doing. And I, I think it can be such a challenge to really stop comparing mm-hmm. and and yep. seeing like other people where they're at. Because I think for us, like knowing how much time we had spent um, working and the you know, having the house and having the cars. And so outwardly that looked what success in America is Mm -hmm. kind of like defined as, Mm -hmm. but I think like redefining for us and then redefining like how we see others. So I don't look at, I just, it just changed my perspective Mm -hmm. on how I look at even like other people. Like I can not having that jealousy of, oh my gosh, like they have all this stuff and they have all these, and like, but actually in my mind and because of our experience, like knowing the cost of what that is, right? Like what that lifestyle looks like um, from the inside. And I, and I think it, yeah, it's just been really good at not, not comparing like our, our journey and our life with anyone else, because now we kind of know um, that everyone, you know, faces uh-huh. all the difficulties, um, in getting to wherever they are and wherever they want to go. Um, mm. and yeah, just not comparing as much. That's so good. <laughs> That's so, so good. Okay. So what advice would you give to other families who are wanting or who are just waiting for the right moment to go right. or to do what they've only dreamed about? <laughs> So, I mean, you already know, like I say do it scared all the time because yeah. we did it terrified. <laughs> like, do it scared. Um, and, and don't wait, like don't wait as long as we did because really waiting as long as we did, didn't accomplish anything. Mm. Like it didn't make closing the company any easier. It didn't make, um, you know, 
rerouting our brains and mm. changing our mentality any easier. Like yeah. if anything, being stuck in this rut for the long term actually made it harder. Mm. So, um, I mean, if you have like even a, a vision or a dream or anything of that, of something different, like do it. And it doesn't have to be, you know, jumping in an, an airstream yeah. and traveling the U S <laughs> with your family. Like it doesn't, yeah. it doesn't have to be that dream, but I think whatever like kernel of a dream or kernel of a vision or whatever it is that's in your brain. Um, I think just doing it, yeah. like if it's there, take action, <laughs> like so do, yeah, do, do what's in your heart. Mm. Um, yeah. Yay. And you'll That's be glad so you did. Good. Yes. <laughs> yes. And um, for those of you who aren't already following Katie on Instagram, be sure to go check her out and follow her. I'll have all the links there. But I'm saying this mostly because if you need inspiration, right, like these are the kind of people you want to follow um, who are doing it scared still. And yeah, I just think it's great. So yeah. Thank um, you. Yes. And then I love to wrap it up with asking you um, what you think of the word legacy and what kind uh, of legacy you want to leave for your children. So that's kind of a hard one because I think when we think of legacy, like we think of a financial legacy or maybe a company or, and I know for my husband, that was a big part of why he built the company that he did is for our, our children and the legacy for them. But I think the best legacy that we can give our kids and leave with our kids is time spent with us Mm -hmm. and the memories spent with us Mm -hmm. and travel. Like, I really feel like Mm -hmm. travel is one of the best legacies that we can give our kids because they're never, ever going to forget the people they meet along the way. They're never going to forget like seeing the Grand Canyon or, mm. you know, experiencing this entirely new location. Or maybe it's going to be a horrible memory <laughs> of the time we had a flat tire on the side of the highway with cars going by us at 80. But it's a memory that they'll never forget. And it's a memory of overcoming hard stuff. Mm. Um, and it's a memory of mom, mom and dad, like jumping out of a plane without parachutes it's just more of like what this journey has felt yeah, like just totally. this whole feeling of oh my gosh what are we doing and hopefully hopefully one of these days whenever our kids like are thinking about making a completely insane decision mm-hmm. they'll be able to look back on their childhood and be like well mom and dad did it and it oh, sort of kind of worked out yes. and and have that as yeah, as their legacy, do just to to do the stuff and to see the places and to meet the people. That's so good. <laughs> I, this is totally random. I don't know if you've even heard of this. There's like this show on Netflix called The Kindness Diaries, and this guy like travels all around the world relying on the kindness of strangers, and it is so amazing and inspiring. But it just that made me think incredible. of that. It's so good. Seriously, like I'm recommending it to everybody because it like I cry every episode because it's oh, like there's a tw- it. yes because there's like a twist too because he like gives back to certain people who are in need and it's just amazing. Uh, oh, Anyways. That incredible. Yes, it's so good. But it just reminds me of that. Like, that's totally the legacy that you guys are, like, planting into your children is these connections and experiences and memories. And that's so precious. You can't you can't put a price on that. Like, that's just yeah. so good. You're so great. Mm-hmm. Oh, Katie, thank you so much for doing this with me and taking the time out of your evening to tell us your story. I'm so thankful. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. I I genuinely love your post and I love your uplifting spirit for mommies. And I just, it's so special to me because especially when you're in that young mommy stage, Mm -hmm. having that support and having, I mean, old old mommy stage too, but especially (laughs) especially when you're just getting started and you feel like you have no idea what to do and no community to turn to. And so I think Instagram accounts like yours, Um, yours in particular are so important and I really love what you're doing wow thank you so much that means so much (laughs) (laughs) oh well thank you again so excited of course thank you so much for listening I hope you enjoyed today's interview please share this with a friend if it impacted you in any way 
and leave a review on iTunes so other mamas can hear the truth, that they are enough and they are doing their very best. Be sure to catch up on what's happening in the Mommy Space community every day on Instagram at Mommy Space. And you can email me at mommyspace at gmail.com for questions or interview recommendations. All my love to you, Mama. You're amazing. See you next week. Let's risk it all, I'll give up what I